relatively recently. Amarone only only got bumped up um, about five or six years ago. Really? So it's uh, the, there are we're not to be able to say precisely. You know, there's 75 DOCGs, but it's a kind of mystery. There's no official list of the full DOCGs, but it's around 75 out of, I mean, literally thousands of wines with letters after their name. So it's still a very special elite category. And does the does a DOCG mean it actually has a specific mix of or blend of wine? It means that it has, it has very strict it has, controls. It has, it's, it's all about compliance. It means uh. it has a rule book, the, you know, the disciplinario, which must be followed if you want to call your wine that particular denomination. So in our case, Brunello. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's a, a system, a very prescriptive system of rules and regulations that have to be followed. So obviously it's a national system. There are about four different levels and systems of judiciary that control it. But um, I'm going to tell you about Brunello, but if you were visiting somebody in Chianti or Nobile di Montepulciano, they would be telling you about their rules. So the rules for Brunello, um, the main ones at least, is that Brunello has to be 100% Sangiovese, which we rather irritatingly call Brunello here in Montalcino. So what you need to know, I feel it's, it's not very helpful, you know, it's the end of the tour everyone, but, Brunello is made of Brunello, okay? But, but, but <laughs> That's isn't, it. Isn't the Brunello grape a variety of Sangiovese. Exactly. Yeah, well, not exactly a variety, it's a clonal variation because yes. uh, Sangiovese, like Pinot Noir, has massive clonal variation and um, the it goes by many names. So what they call Prugnolo in Montepulciano or Morellino by the coast or um, Brunello here in Montalcino, they are all Sangiovese. Oh. Sangiovese is Italy's most common grape, but we, we call it Brunello here. So uh, Brunello has to be made of 100% Brunello slash Sangiovese that has to have been grown on the slopes of Montalcino. So, um, you know, this is a small area. When I receive uh, trade visitors or people who are familiar with Californian wine, they say, oh, it's, it's just like Paso Robles here. And I have to point out that the amount of land under vine in Paso Robles is um, 32,000 acres, and in Montalcino it's 9,000. We're talking about a very, very small area within an already limited area that's authorized for, for winemaking, because many people, I'm sure you yourself have wondered, about all this massive amount of undeveloped land. Um, you know, if we were somewhere else, I mean, France or, 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 or America, certainly such a famous wine area would be just, you know, bristling with vineyards by now. But um, what happened in Montalcino was that in 1995, so 15 years into the DOCG, the various powers that be um, froze the authorization for making more Brunello. So this was an incredibly astute so no more move vineyards from 95 be... onwards. So what that literally means is that from 95 onwards, anybody wishing to start a new property or grow an existing vineyard is forced to buy or rent existing vineyards. So, so you can't do that. I mean, the, classically, I know that people take an old vineyard, say in Sicily, grub that, it up and take the permission. That's a different system. That's the diritti di rimpianto. In okay. order to plant any vineyard, you have to find, you know, it's, <laughs> you have right. to find another vineyard that someone's right. prepared to take down. But that's to do with keeping Italy's entire vineyard pool okay. stable. This is the authorization for planting Brunello. So if I if I had the authorization for planting Brunello, I would also then have to have a diritti di rimpianto, which could come from Sicily. But the thing is with Montalcino is that it's it's stabilized the amount of land under vine within the town. Stabilized so if, forever? Who knows? Who knows? But if you if I mean I think many people who come here just think it's you know it's so odd. There's, woodlands and olive trees and mm. arable land and, and it seems to be underdeveloped. It, in a way it isn't because in the first 15 years from 80 to 95 the number of producers went from 37 of whom 12 were bottling to over 250 making multiple labels. So certainly in, a, in, in some ways it was time to put a lid on things. Certainly those who had their feet in the door already don't feel that there's any need to authorize more of Montage. Sure. You know, I mean, we don't really want the world sure. to be awash with inferior quality. Brunello's the best land is already under vine. Um, you know, it's, it, it also means that you have every incentive to stop if it's not working for you, if it's not profitable, because there's a huge, you know, desire for people to 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 buy land. So, um, you know, obviously this this decision to, to block authorizations was extremely smart for you know marketing luxury. Uh, you know, exclusive aspects of the wine, but also, um, you know, it pushed the, the land prices up. At the moment, the price for a hectare of Brunello, so that's about 2.2 .2 acres, is around 650,000 euros. 
So it's right up there. That's isn't it? lower than it was, though, isn't it? No, no, I no, no. I thought it no. reached a million or something. Not for no, no, not, no. Okay. I mean, it depends if you're if you're giving a value to a property plus vineyards. Okay. Then then yes, but that, just vineyards. And how many bottles can you produce on that? Uh, from a hectare, well, to be extraordinarily precise, the maximum yield according to the DOCG for Brunello um, from a hectare is seven thousand kilos of grapes. And the maximum yield in juice from that is 63%. So I'll let you do the maths yourself. <laughs> but the, a hectare of Brunello. It's about 4,000 bottles. Yeah. Well, it's yeah, 4,000 no. litres, which is about 5,500 bottles. Exactly. Thank you for doing that. Exactly. So, um, so going back to the regulation. So we have one, one area of Montalcino, limited area of, within Montalcino. Montalcino area itself is relatively limited. One kind of grape. Um, the vines, you're not allowed to overproduce, so you're not allowed to have more than these 7,000 kilos. So what happens to the overproduction? Well, the, in, in other countries, for example France, if there's a yield limitation, you can only pick X for the certain wine and whatever's left over you can destine to less prestigious sure. wines. Here in Montalcino, you're not allowed to have more than 7,000 kilos per hectare on the, ground, on the vine, so you're not allowed to have them thrive, so you're forced to abort and cull and cut down the potential production um, it early on in the year in order not to have too much on the vine so there's no extra so if you do all your pruning I mean we aim to pick around 5,000 kilos per hectare um, and you do we do it all and then you have a hailstorm you, you know you can never get back what you what you what you chose to to relinquish earlier on in the season so you relinquish as late as possible obviously well no it's because it, the, the whole point of having a limited yield is to focus the, the quantity the quality of the grapes right. You know, if you had, well, each one of these inverted L's is a single vine. If you had 10 bunches, each bunch would get a tenth of the vine strength. If you only allow five to thrive, they're going to be twice as good. So the later you do so this pruning... it's a balance pruning, of risk and room. The later you do this pruning, the, the, the less effect uh, the, 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 the decision will have. So really, you want to do some of it um, early on while, when you're cutting, when we do the, when we prune off these straggly bits. We're already, we're already pre-selecting how many bunches we want to have and then we go through again, uh, usually in April, May, doing a green harvest, chopping any any you know any extras off, and then we will cut again after the grapes have changed colour after Veraison in towards the end of August. Con I mean, we're, we're constantly faffing around. This is a small estate; we have five hectares and five full-time staff. So um, the, the the vineyard health, the canopy health. Do we need to strip off the leaves on one side or the other? All of these vintage-specific decisions, um, which are you know, to do with what we think may happen in three or four or six months' time, are um, are going may change the number of bunches we have. So, for example, in 2017, we we wanted to have 5,000 kilos per hectare, but we, we ended up picking less than 3,000. That that was not a choice, but that's how it panned out. Sure, but that's all.